Hello everyone, V-Ray 7 is finally here and I'm excited to share my favorite new updates. Thanks to them, you will work faster and more efficient. Let's dive in. I will start with render settings as there are some changes here. First, you will notice two engine options, CPU, computer processor, and GPU, graphics card. In the new V-Ray, the system automatically determines whether to use CUDA or RTX when you select GPU. Since I'm using an RTX graphics card, I've selected GPU. When you expand the V-Ray GPU tab, you will see the GPU engine is set to RTX by default. If needed, you can still switch to CUDA, but I won't do that because V-Ray has already made the correct choice for my setup. Overall, the setup is much simpler. The denoiser has been updated in V-Ray 7. Now you can set it to auto and not worry about adjusting anything manually. In previous versions, I used the V-Ray denoiser because it was more accurate, but with the new auto setting, it's much simpler. I've switched to auto for my workflow and it works great. Let's take a look at the material override tab. In the new V-Ray, this tab offers more options. You can override models with different colors and materials easily. The best part is you no longer have to manually adjust properties for transparent materials like glass, such as unchecking the can be overridden option. Now you can simply go to the Preserve Properties tab and check the Refraction option. This ensures all transparent materials like windows will not be overridden, allowing natural light to pass through and illuminate the scene properly. Additionally, you can preserve bump, reflection, opacity and self-illumination. This means even the material override turned on, details like transparency, emissive materials or reflections will still appear in the render. That's a really handy feature. The next feature I really like is the updated light mix render element. By selecting light mix, I can enable the separate emissive materials option. This allows me to adjust all emissive materials individually during post-production. I can modify their color and intensity separately, which provides great flexibility and full control over emissive materials. A new feature in V-Ray is luminaire's option. In KS Cosmos, you can access ready-made lighting models with the Luminars feature. All you need to do is import your chosen model into the scene. In the Geometry tab, you will find the Luminars option. Make sure it's enabled. This feature helps speed up rendering and improves the overall lighting quality. Unfortunately, in my case, this option doesn't work perfectly. With the Luminaries option enabled, I've noticed darker rectangles appearing in the render. I've tested it several times, but I haven't been able to resolve the issue. However, when I disable the Luminaries option, everything works fine. I'm not sure if this is an isolated issue with my setup or if it's a general problem, so I recommend testing it on your own computer. Are you happy with this video? This scene I've been working on is part of my brand new V-Ray for SketchUp visualization course coming soon. Make sure to sign up for the list and you will be the first to know when it's ready. Check the description below the video or click at the upper right corner. Let's move on to materials. A significant change has been introduced. In previous versions of V-Ray, when creating materials, we could use MixMap, Mix Operator, Simple Mix, or Mix Value to combine two maps together. In V-Ray 7, all these options have been replaced with the layered map. Let's take a closer look. In the Diffuse tab with PBR materials, we used to mix the ambient occlusion map with the color map using the Mix Operator. In V-Ray 7, we can achieve the same result using the layered map. Here's how. Select the layered map and in layer 1, upload the color map. Set the blending opacity option to multiply. Then add a new layer and upload the ambient occlusion map to it. Again, set blending opacity to multiply. And that's it. The two maps are now combined. With the layered map, we can create very complex materials. Let's create a fabric material step by step. In the Diffuse tab, select the layered map. For the first layer, upload a fabric texture. Next, create another layer and upload a map with stains. 
Since the blending opacity is set to multiply, the two maps are mixed together. You can also control which layer is more visible. For example, if I reduce the intensity of the stain map to 0.5, the stains become less visible. The same applies to the fabric texture. By decreasing its intensity, it becomes less visible. This way, you can adjust the intensity of each map separately, giving you full control over the final result. What is more, you can add a third map and mix all three maps together. Experiment with the intensities to achieve the best result. Additionally, you can change the blending mode to something other than multiply. If you set the blending mode to normal, only the top layer will be visible as it overrides the others. Try out different blending modes to see how they affect the result. Personally, I often use the multiply blending mode to mix maps together. Let's move on to post-production. One of the great updates is region render. Previously, the region render shape was limited to a rectangle. Now you can select custom shaped regions, giving you more control over rendering specific areas. This not only saves time, but also makes adjustment much more efficient. Another great feature is the vignette. It allows you to create a focus in your render by adding a vignette effect. You can adjust the size and intensity of the vignette, as well as its position and color. I really like this feature because previously I had to add the vignette in Photoshop, but now this option is available directly in V-Ray. The final new feature in post-production is filters. On the left side, next to the History tab, you can select Filters. This allows you to change the color and atmosphere of your render. Each filter can be adjusted in its properties, and you can also change the filter's intensity. I find this update very helpful because I no longer need to use Photoshop for post-production. Everything can be done directly in V-Ray. Which update in the new V-Ray 7 is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Check out my website edag.org. You will find there many free content, V-Ray for SketchUp course and articles. See you there. Bye.